Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do something a little different for this channel. Normally we do a lot of camping stuff, we do a lot of uh, product reviews and that kind of thing, but we're going to do a little DIY on this air conditioner here. This is one of those roll around air conditioners you can use in an apartment or what have you. And what this thing is doing is it's starting up, cools beautifully, cycles off, puts an E4 code on the, on the uh, air code on the screen and will not come back on, it will not cycle back on. It's not abnormal to see these things cycle off, maybe see an E4 code and it'll cycle back on and we're fine and you don't need to worry about it if that's the case. But in this one here, it just will not come back. But since it cools so well, when it does cool, we're gonna see if we can fix this thing for a price that would uh, not, uh, not break the bank. These things aren't that expensive to buy used, so if it is too expensive, then we'll end up buying something else to replace it. Now, what I'm going to do is show you what I had to do to take it apart, and we'll have some videos of it in pieces and showing you the tests that we've done to make this thing come back to life. And trust me, it didn't take a lot to get this thing back to life. It was rather inexpensive. So if you've got one of these, and this one here is a Gold, uh, a, uh, Gold Star and LG, the same basic thing, same company. But you can take this and use this information on pretty much all of them. Anyhow, let's get started. Let me show you what we need to do to take it apart. Then we'll get it out here in the patio and we'll tear it apart and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, with here's it. the unit. First thing you want to do, make sure this thing is unplugged from the wall. Never mess with an electrical item if it's plugged in. Under the front here, down in this area here, there's going to be two screws and you're going to remove those screws. You're then going to bring it around this way and around the perimeter, you're going to see a number of screws all the way around the perimeter. You're going to want to take those screws out. Before you do that though, you're going to want to get down here and take this one filter and there's a second filter. You want to take those out. Take a look at the filter, see if they're plugged up and dirty. If they are, we might be looking at a system that is all plugged up with dirt and that may be all we need to do. But now, once you get those, get the front off, you get this un unscrewed around the perimeter, you're just going to lift this front, slide it out of the way. The panel will stay with it, but it can be removed, but I'll just leave it there because you want to, you're going to want to use that panel to uh, operate it and see if you've made your repairs properly. Then, once it's done, you'll have four screws here. You can take those out and you're going to lift this up about a half an inch and then pull it away because right here, there is a little clip that locks in and it's made of plastic, so don't pull on it and break it. If you do, it's not going to be, it's not you know, it's not going to be detrimental to it. You can still use the thing, but, you know, why break it if you don't have to? Okay. Now, let's get this out back, and we'll tear it apart. Now, once you have the clamshell all unscrewed, you want to just to, just to separate them. Now, you're going to find that there's lines attached to it, so you don't want to go too far with it. The front face will have the control panel on it. The control panel can be slipped off of there, but we're not going to bother with that. We're just going to leave it as it is, because we need it all together when we test this thing. Take this back panel and bring it back and there are lines here that you want to you see they're right here. You could disconnect them from underneath there if you want but it's just not really worth doing. I would just leave it because we are going to put this all back in place. Now the first thing we want to address with uh, an E4 code is that uh, the possibility of dirt. We've got a condenser right here, and the condenser is like a large radiator. And then underneath here we have the evaporator. Again, another one like a large radiator. You can see the tubes and what have you. Now on the other side of this, right here, on the other side of these, we're going to find that dirt will get trapped in there. And what happens is, is it come, the, this is the blower here air comes in through the blower, blows up and comes out this way. So the dirt's on the other side where you can't see it. Now my suggestion would be to take a flashlight and shine it up from through the, uh, the uh, fan area. Then look in here and see if you can see light through it. If you can see light through it, chances are it's not going to be plugged up. And in this case it was not. It was uh, nice and clean and clear. But I did go and blow it out anyways. And what I did was I used compressed air and I used a nozzle that gave me a lot of air pressure out of it. And you blow it across the fins 
two or three times. Don't hit the fins because these things are delicate and they will, they will crush and that will stop airflow. And do it on both sides. At the same time, I installed a uh, vacuum uh, a shop vac. I just put the vacuum head down and down in, the, in there and turned it on while this is blowing out and it sucked the stuff up and then you go and clean whatever le is left there. Now there are filters in the system, which I showed you earlier before we took it apart. And you can see this is how this one came out, nice and clean. If this thing comes out dirty, then you know you're going to have some dirt si inside there. And the same with this one here, there's two filters. Both very, very clean. Just a slight bit, and I will blow this out and clean it up. But that indicated that there was really no dirt to be found in the system. So what does that do? It leaves me to lead, think that something else is the problem. If you do have find a lot of dirt in there, clean it out, slap the clamshells back together. Don't bother screwing them together. Just put them together as you saw them as I started to tear them apart here. Run the thing and see if your E4 uh, code comes back. If it doesn't, then you find your problem. You don't need to go any farther. If you do, however, and uh, in this case, we did find that we had uh, another E4 code still continuing. And I had expected that. That means we're looking at possibility of sensors. These are the sensors, and there's a sensor right here. And that sensor has a little clip on it. You can see this little clip right here. And you lift this clip and work the sensor up out of the way, and you want to lift this face up, and this face can be lifted out of the way. And you take that sensor out, okay? Once you get the sensor out, we're going to go up underneath Let me get this back up where we can see what I'm doing here. We're going to want to go into this case here. Again, be sure you have had this everything unplugged. Now right here, there are, there's a screw, and on the other side there's a screw. You take those two screws out. And as you, now you'll have these tabs you can see along here and along the back here. You're going to depress these tabs and then lift this thing up. Then push it forward and release it. Now you're into the guts of the system. One thing you want to avoid, this item right here, this big round cylinder, that is a capacitor. It is like a battery fully charged. It holds its charge in it and it can be deadly. So just avoid it and the wires coming out of it, which are these right here. Just avoid those if you can. What we're looking at is right here. These wires here, this is a sensor that goes down to the evaporator. There's a second sensor. Yeah, the sensors on this wire right here, and there it is. And what this sensor does is it just actually samples the ambient air temperature so the computer inside the control board has the ability to compare. That runs along here, up under here, under this transformer, and along the board, and is plugged in right there. Now you see that the two of them will come in right in this area right here. And what you're going to do, you're going to find that right here, there will be a, a kind of like a hot glue that holds the thing in so it doesn't uh, rattle loose What you're going to want to do anything. is you're going to want to take you know, something like a little small jeweler screwdriver or what have you, and just kind of work that stuff off of there to pop this thing loose. Then just kind of lift You'll see the little tab there. You want to just kind of lift that little guy and work it off. It's it can be in there tight. There we go. Now you'll have it off. Have the thing out. And on the underside, you're going to see an exposed area. These are little retainer clips, and that's very good for accessing it with our meter to test it. All right. Now that you've determined that you need to test this sensor here, you're going to want to take it out of its cavity down here. It was originally held in with a uh, tie wrap up here. I've cut it out and I've actually, actually already replaced it with the new one. Um, what that item is called is called a thermistor. A thermistor is basically a resistor that is affected by the thermal air around it, the temperatures and what have you. Um, as the temperature gets colder, the resistance goes up. As the temperature gets warmer, the resistance goes down. That information is sent to the processors and the uh, board up here, and it knows exactly what to do when it gets that information. Now, on this particular model, that thermistor is set at 10,000 ohms, okay? And 
this, the resistance will go up to the area of 15,000 ohms when this thing reaches a temperature that should be cutting the system off. In other words, we're looking at about two degrees Celsius or 33, 34 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And that's when the system will shut the thing down. It'll allow it to cool off, keeping your evaporator core from freezing. That's the main thing they're concerned about is keeping it from freezing. And then it will then, once it reaches a predetermined temperature, it will then come back on, okay? In this case, it was getting cold. It was shutting down and not coming back on. A lot of you guys have probably experienced that in the earth and wonder, well, well, gee, why won't it come back on? Well, in this case, we had a thermistor that, in this, this one here, instead of reading the 10,000 ohms that it was supposed to read, it was reading around 5,300 ohms. So what you're going to want to do is uh, to test this thing is a good one will read 10,000 ohms when it's at ambient air temperature. And then when you cool it down, and what we do to cool it down is take a glass of water and put ice in it. Let the water come down to the freezing temperature and then up to submerge the, the tip here. And that's this right here. And you can see this is the copper one. And when you do have a replacement thing, you're going to want to get the one with the copper one because that's the one that's for this particular, for air conditioning units. But you're going to take this and submerge it in the water and watch the homage on it. You're going to probe the two ends here, which are going to be the white ones I was showing you earlier up there. You're going to be probing those and you're going to watch the resistance go up. It should go up to about 15,000 ohms, give or take about 5%, okay? You could test it by putting it in hot water too if you wanted to test it down, but that's not what we're concerned about in this case. Uh, mine went from uh, 5,300 ohms up to uh, somewhere around 5,700 ohms. So it was doing something, it was responding, but unfortunately it was way out of range. So once you test it, you then want to replace it if it's defective, okay? If it's not defective, you want to test this other one over here. And I would test both of them, both with the same kind of readings. Uh, this one here, which is the ambient one I showed you earlier, that one read fine. But right now we're dealing with this here. Now I'm going to show you how you remove this thing from the, uh, uh, from from the uh, the end here because what you're going to get has two terminals on it. Hold on one second while I get a sample. All right, I got that in. So, okay, those are what what it, it came with. Okay, now I've already replaced this and tested this to make sure the system's working and it is. These are up inside here, and what you're going to do is you're going to take this little screwdriver again, and you're going to depress right there while you pull on this here on this wire and it'll slide don't don't bit aggressive just be, it'll come out easily once it's released it slides out and then you do the same on the other side now you're going to notice here when you get I don't know if the camera's going to show it but on one of these you're going to have these white stripes be aware of which side of these had the white stripes on it so you can put it back in the same position I don't know that it's going to make a difference but it doesn't hurt to be, you know, stay, stay with what they've originally done. Once you get it out, you're going to take the sleeve and slip the sleeve off of it because the new one comes without a sleeve. And here's a new one here, it comes without a sleeve. Slide the sleeve on, and it's just a protective device. Slide the sleeve over it, and you maybe have to, might have to cut it a little bit because this one was an inch shorter than the original. But I cut it down a little bit, and then slid the sleeve over it. Pop the sensors back, the sensor terminals back in place. And then you're gonna just plug it back in here. Reinstall it down here. And then you're going to slide the clamshells together and you're going to test it. If it's working, and it should work, if it's working, then you've uh, corrected the condition and you're ready to assemble the thing. Now, what I would do is let it run for a long period of time. And I let this run for oh, hours. And I did notice that it blew out a lot of cold air right out of here. I could feel the cold air coming out and it was really cold. But then after a while, it, gained, I was, it was blowing ambient air. And I thought, well, it, hadn't, it had failed. But I looked and saw that there was no E4 on there. So apparently, this has, when it shuts down, it has a long cycle period before it comes back on again. So don't get that fool you to think that, oh, I haven't fixed it. If there's no code, 
just let it run for a while and it comes back. And it did, this has come back. I'm gonna reassemble this thing and run it for days before I return it to my daughter and uh, make sure it's gonna stay working. But that was all we needed to do. Now, reassembling, you're gonna be putting the lid back on here. We're gonna put the, put the, the uh, let me bring us back a bit. We'll put the lid back on here. We'll get some new tie wraps, tie wrap this stuff here and the same on the other side. Put the clamshell all back together. And when you do put it together on this particular one here, on the back here, there is a hook. So it's, you lift it up and drop it down into a cavity right there on the back of this housing. Then insert the screws, run it, test it, see what you got. There you have it, humming right along, cool and beautifully, and all for under $3.50 American. You can see why we didn't want to toss this thing. It was cool and well, and there were a lot of inexpensive parts that we, we could get in. I knew that going in. There were also some expensive parts going in there. Had we needed one of those expensive parts, such as a circuit board or what have you, we would have passed on the repairs. But it had the basic bones of a good system. It was cooling. It was cooling beautifully. It just didn't want to come back to life. Anyhow. For $3.50 or less, you can't beat it. I've got a system now that works. It actually belongs to my daughter and we'll go back to her house or her apartment and she will uh, love having this. Hot weather's coming out soon and this is gonna fit real nice in there. Now, if you're doing this kind of work and you have the slightest bit of doubt about working with electrical things, you might want to avoid it. Um, not a lot of things that give you trouble in here. I did tell you, show you a few of the things out there when we're tearing it apart, what to avoid. But you know, the thing is, is if you, it's a danger thing. And if you're not sure what you're doing, if you're fumbling through things like that and it scares you, get somebody to do it or just get a new one. It's just not worth it. Anyhow, I wanna thank you for coming by and watching this. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again down the road. Bye now.